everyone, Kaylee, your friendly neighborhood hairstylist here, and today we are gonna be doing some bridal hair and makeup. Hi guys, guess what? Today, I'm trying on wedding dresses. I really believe that when you try on wedding dresses, the best thing you can do for yourself is put on like a full face of makeup and do your hair up or down, depending on what you think you're gonna wear, and that way when you're trying on dresses, you get even more of an idea of the like final picture, and it helps things to just like, and that way you're not like trying to ignore like a sweaty ponytail or like no makeup on your face or like whatever. Just anything that might be distracting you, put it away. Do the makeup, do the hair, it makes it way easier. I promise. So today I'm gonna take you guys through this makeup look and also the hair, which I am keeping a mystery right now while I answer some questions that you guys had about my wedding. So I think it's gonna be a fun little hangout, but hopefully you guys also enjoy the makeup tutorial and hair tutorial that are thrown in there as we go. I'm just so excited for wedding stuff and I wanna be like putting it on my channel. So let me know if you guys wanna see more wedding related content. I've been feeling a little shy about like, are people gonna be interested or not? So let me know. But yeah, I'm very excited for today's video. Very excited to show you guys some products that I've been loving lately and talk about wedding stuff. So all that said, let's get into it. Oh my gosh, hello. I'm so excited we're doing makeup today. Hope you guys enjoy this. Let me know if you want more. But so far, my skin is prepped. We've got moisturizer and SPF and all the good stuff and it's time to get into face. I like to do my face first. So the next thing I would normally do is prime, but the foundation that I'm using says it doesn't need primer. And I decided today on camera was going to be the best time to try that for the first time. So, <laughs> but before I put on the foundation, I'm actually going to put a little bit of highlighter on my cheekbones. I recently saw this makeup artist talking about how she likes to under highlight and she doesn't put highlight over top of foundation usually. And I was like, say more, because I love a glow, but I also don't love looking too artificially glowy. So I've been playing around with this. The uh, liquid highlighter I'm using today is from Becca. It is their liquefied liquid highlight in Ignite. This brand has sadly gone out of business and it's breaking my heart. I am so sorry if you just learned that for the first time here. There are some places that are still selling their products and at a discount. So if you had any big favorites, I would go snatch them. But basically any liquid highlight that you love would be the one to use right now. I'm using this one because it's so stroby and so bright that I feel like even after you put foundation over it, you're gonna see it. So we've got our pre-highlight on, now let's get into some foundation. I'm gonna be using the Face Atelier Ultra Foundation Pro. This is a pro foundation, which I discovered because I've gotten really into pro makeup artist TikTok and YouTube, and like 90% of people have this in their kit. And I was like, okay, well if 90% of people carry this to functions where they get paid to do makeup, I need to try it. <laughs> Clearly I have dotted it all over my face and I have an IT Cosmetics Heavenly Skin brush. Anyway, I saw this everywhere and I was like, I have to buy it. And so far, I'm really seeing the hype. At first blush, I think it kind of looks better without primer. So uh, they were right. And the highlight is peeking through. Will I probably still put more highlight on top? Yes. <laughs> okay, so I still have a little bit on my hand. I'm just gonna take this and put more coverage where I feel like I need it. Oh yeah, I should probably do the other under eye. That's a good idea. All right, so now I'm just gonna powder under my eyes to uh, set this so it's not creased at all. And I'm gonna use the Tatcha Silk Powder. I recently bought a little set of Tatcha makeup, just like the little travel size, like the little bitties, and I'm loving it. I'm just gonna grab this Bedellium, not sure that's how you say it, Tools 184 brush. I just love something really fluffy and long for this. The longer and fluffier, the better. If you guys have any brushes that are like that and you love them, leave them in the comments because I haven't found my perfect one yet and I want one. This one's pretty close. I want just a tiny bit longer and fluffier. And look at that. like. My eyes have wrinkles. I cannot deny or hide that, but they look the least crepey and the least wrinkly with this combo. Alrighty, I think it's time to start answering some questions. I went on Instagram and asked you guys what wedding questions you have. The very first question is from Jenna and she asked, do you wanna get married? Babe, yes, of course I do. <laughs> so for my cream blush and contour, I'm going to use these products from Danessa Myricks. She just launched at Sephora and I already am in love with her. I'm going to use the shade Gingerbread for my bronzer 
kind of bronzy contour. It's this gorgeous like light brown shade and you could use it on cheeks, on eyes, on lips, whatever. But it's been looking really good as a bronzer for me. And then I have bread and butter here and that's gonna be my cheeks. So one of the questions that I am seeing the very most is, are you both gonna wear dresses? Are you gonna wear suits? What's going on here? I think one of my very, very favorite experiences of having a same-sex wedding is that you get to make whatever rules you want. If we both wanted to wear jeans, we could. For me, I'm really excited to wear a dress. For my first wedding, my strategy was to buy a dress the very, very first appointment that I went to no matter what. So I walked into that shop and I was walking out with a dress. And so I picked the one that I liked the most that day, but my mom, the saleswoman, <laughs> my sister were all like, um, are you sure? <laughs> Cause you don't seem super excited about it. And yeah, I, I really wasn't. So I think this time I am very, very excited to really try on dresses until I find the one that really matches me and what I wanna look like and feel like on that day. So yes, dress for me. Right now, the idea is that Jenna will be wearing a jumpsuit or pants and a top or a suit, but until she tries stuff on, we don't really know. But I do also wanna point out that like every same-sex wedding is its own thing. So just because we have pants and a skirt going on doesn't mean that that's how it has to be. There are so many beautiful lady weddings where both parties wear dresses and it's gorgeous. Um, sometimes there's both pants and that's gorgeous. It's all beautiful and wonderful. So we don't wanna force any kind of heteronormativity onto it. But uh, for us, that is how it's shaken out. This went on so easy that I didn't even have to think about it. The colors are gorgeous. I love them. And then I am actually even gonna take a little bit of this. I'm just gonna mix a little bit of it into my lip balm. Now comes the all important question about highlight. We have a really great glow going. So I have this Face Atelier Ultra Sheer. Okay, I'm just gonna take this Sigma Soft Blend 50 brush and I'm just gonna like pat this on top. I love this highlight because it's not glittery, it's just sheen. It looks so natural and real. And because it's got the same kind of base as the foundation, it doesn't move the foundation when you put it on. And then because my skin is on the oilier side these days, I am going to set with some powder. I could definitely set with some more of that Tatcha, but I am reserving it for my under eyes. And I'm going to use the Danessa Myricks Evolution Powder. It is so good. I am using this tiny little brush for my face. Why? Because when I use a big brush, I put on way too much powder and I end up with cake face. And we don't want cake face. I would rather dust it where I need it, lightly, than um, just cover my face in a layer of flour like it's a biscuit or something. Oh yeah, she's back in the South making biscuit analogies, my goodness. I really, 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 really like this powder. It's really finely milled, it's really soft. Okay, I feel like this leads well to my next question that I got a ton, which is, are you going to do your own hair and makeup? I had a hard time deciding on that. <laughs> All right, so for now, for my eyes, I am going to prime with MAC Paint Shirley Paint Pot. I will also link a Revolution makeup product that works just as well uh, and is a lot less expensive. Okay, so as far as whether or not I'm gonna do my own hair and makeup, here's the thing. I know that I technically can, but I also know that that is going to be very, very stressful because A, I feel pressure to have really good hair and makeup on the day and Jenna wants her hair and makeup done and I definitely do not want that stress and pressure on the day of. Plus like I want to see her at our first look. So I did make the decision to have somebody do our hair and makeup and whoever of our bridesmaids wants makeup as well. It's one of those things where it's like just because you can doesn't mean you should and I was like I'm either going to spend a few hours on my wedding day, like in a mirror, staring at my face, trying to make everything perfect, or I'm gonna get to like sit and be pampered and enjoy time with my girls and sip mimosas. And I was like that, I want that experience. For my eyes, I actually want to take some inspiration from Emma Chen on Instagram. She is this fantastic Aussie makeup artist and I love all of the makeup that she does. So that is the inspiration I'm giving my makeup artist and I thought it would be good for me to kind of try some of these looks myself. I don't know why my, my lips are kind of like not feeling great right now. 
I'm just gonna go ahead and take the rest of this off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put on the Fido Glow lip balm from Naturium. Will Pippin be the ring bearer? Oh, I really, really wish, honestly. I think that would be super cute, but our venue does not allow animals. And also, if I'm being honest and not just a doggo mom, Pippin would have a really hard time making it down the aisle because there are so many people that need to be loved and shown the attention that they deserve that he would, I don't think, be able to make it very far because not only does he need to give love and attention to people, he needs to receive love and attention from people and there are just too many humans there for him to ignore. I genuinely believe that he would just be greeting every single guest and I would just be in the back waiting like, come on, come on, Pippin is my day though. I will include him in some way, I'm sure, but uh, yeah, he will not be there on the day of, unfortunately. Can you tell us about the the vibe slash aesthetic of the wedding. Yes, I can. I am gonna keep some things, you know, secret until the day of, but the adjectives that I've been using to kind of describe the vibe of the wedding have been minimal, whimsical, garden. It is an indoor wedding because Jenna and I were too concerned about the possibility of rain but just gardeny in general. Trying to marry both Jenna's love of minimalism and geometric shapes and my love of organic greenery, eclectic elements mixed together. And so I think we're gonna put those two together as much as we can and have like this cool like balance together. Do you feel more pressure about having a perfect wedding because of your online persona? You know, I don't want to, but yes, yes a little bit. I am trying really hard to focus on how great and supportive the Bradaholic community is because, I mean, you guys are so good. You're so great. I really can't deny that. So I know that whatever I do, you guys are gonna be just complete, like wonderful, supportive people. But I do feel like it's not just like me getting married. It's like, what do I, as my most creative self put forward, it feels like almost like my own Met Gala. I know it's not, you know? And I just try not to live in that headspace. I try to just like do, what I want to do for myself and for my fiance to have the most beautiful, bestest day that I will then be happy to share online, but I am not making exclusively for online. And I think I am finding that balance, but it is definitely something that I've had to process through and think about quite a bit, just in order to kind of keep my head on straight, you know? All right, so far I've applied a shimmery metallic over the lid and then a very light, brown through the crease. I'm gonna put a little bit of light under my brow bone now. I'm gonna take a little bit of that same light brown and put it underneath my lids because she does that for all of her people. I'm gonna put a tiny, tiny bit darker brown in the crease. And now finally, I'm going to use some brown liner to create a winged liner. Then I'm gonna take a slightly darker brown, like an almost black brown, and that's gonna go really, really close into the eye. I'm gonna shorten this wing a little bit. I want just the tiniest bit more. I'm gonna pull out my Patrick Ta palette. I'm gonna use the shade Opulence and I'm going to use it wet. I'm gonna take a little bit of Inglot Duraline. You can mix this with any powder to turn it into kind of like a liquid eyeliner. It's great. So I get a whole bunch on my finger and then I'm gonna tap it into here. And I usually do this more than once and I'll go with different fingers each time because I don't want to alter the formula of the eyeshadow. Then I'm just going to tap that on the center and it just like gives this tiny bit of dazzle without being over the top and it doesn't move anywhere through the day because it's got the dura line. You can also use Inglot Dura Line to revive dried out gel eyeliners. All right, and then while it's still a little wet, I like to put the tiniest bit on top because it sticks to it really well. But there we go. I think this is the look I was going for. I think I did it. I'm using this new Essence Mascara. It's the Curl and Volume Mascara. I like it a lot, lot, lot. It's so pretty. Okay, downside of eyeshadow as eyeliner is that I think the eyelash curler took it off. I think I'm gonna stick to blurring out gel liners from now on or applying powder over gel liners to blend first dance song i do not think we have completely decided but i think we only have two in the running it's really just which kind of vibe we want because they're two totally different vibes what have you finished so far i guess as far as like wedding planning we have a style board we have a venue we have a planner We're using the patrick ta brow lamination this stuff is 
Stellar. We have photographer. We have videographer. We, as of last week, have linens. We have hair and makeup. That one was, oh my gosh, guys. The whole like planning for a 2022 wedding is crazy because everybody is getting married in 2022. And honestly, I'm so happy for everybody. I'm happy that people are getting to get, you know, married, do all this stuff but it has definitely made planning more intense. <laughs> so I went to just go casually be like, oh, person, you're who I want to do my hair and makeup for my wedding. And they were like, um, I'm sorry, I'm actually already booked. And I was like, are you kidding me? I ended up contacting about 12 people before I found somebody who had availability. And that was very, very stressful. That was what finally made me cry, I think the first time, was like the pressure of having really good hair and makeup and being really afraid that I wasn't going to be able to find people. I'm really excited about the person that we eventually booked though. We are circling in on the catering. Oh, we have the bar. We're getting real close. I think the only things left we have to do are to nail down the floors, the caterer, and any rentals. Oh, we have a DJ. I think Jenna's designing the invitations because she's a graphic designer, so why not? She has tentatively started setting up the wedding website. So we've got a lot done. <laughs> um, some people wanna know if I'm gonna do a video about the dress and dress shopping. I think I have decided that I'm going to hold all of that, like the big video on picking out my dress until after the wedding, just because I don't want to spoil anything about my dress and I don't want anybody like making me second guess my choices. <laughs> that is happening, but it's not going to be released for a little while. Okay, we have spiked the brows. Now we must fill them in. This is the NYX Lift and Snatch. Yeah, brow tint pen. I love this thing. We have reached the second part of the video where I need to focus and not speak, and that is eyelashes. This looks kind of messy, but I have this set of individual lash clusters from Amazon. I've only used it a few times, but I really, really like the effect that it gives, and these little clusters are actually pretty easy to put on. When it comes to lips, I'm really minimal. I'm just gonna use this Essence Stay 8 Hour Lip Liner in the color Cosnova. Let's just do a little bit of new lipstick. And the final step, setting spray. I have been loving the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Setting Spray. It is really, really good. Okay, so that is our makeup look. I think I've done the bronzy Aussie babe that I was looking for. Now I'm gonna put in some hair extensions. I do want long hair for my wedding. That is why I'm growing it out. TBD on how much I really need extensions or not on the day of, but right now, while well, I have to fake it to try on dresses, I'm gonna put in some extensions. Okay, so it's no secret that I am obsessed with Beyond Hair Extensions, still am, but I recently have picked up some more because I haven't tried this brand yet and I am trying to always stay up on what is out there so I know what's good. And I feel like if I just stay in like one little lane and never try anything else, I'm not gonna know. So that's how I legitimize this purchase. So the ones I'm using today are from Milk and Blush. Part of the reason I picked them is because I liked that they were highlighted and low lighted and I thought they would go with my hair really well, which they do. I also really liked that they have this one band that's super like thick. There's four wefts here and then everything else is a seamless weft and there's not as much hair. And I thought that that would help a lot with blending kind of this blunt length into a longer length. I think it's important to remind you guys that even though I have products that I super duper love, I will still try more. And I might find ones that I really like that are different. And that doesn't mean that something that I've recommended before is no longer good. It just means that it's been joined by a new really good friend. Real quick, what I'm doing here is separating off this little section of hair right around the side and the back of my neck on one side. I'm gonna braid that back. I don't super have to at this length anymore, but it does make it a lot easier. All right, this is messy, but it does not need to be good. And now same thing on the other side. These are the hairs that will really expose you if you have a blunter cut. And so braiding them back is really, really, really helpful. And now I'm just gonna pin these little braids back and out of the way. Next piece I'm going to put in so that it goes against my neck like this. The clips are reaching over and down and getting clipped in. So I'm going up, hooking some hair, then pointing it all the way back down, clipping it in. This is gonna cover any other little telltale hairs that we didn't braid up. All right, and now we can let down some more hair. Now I'm gonna make a U-shaped part just a couple inches above that last section of hair and clip this up. And first I'm going to curl these and then I'm going to clip in my next piece and curl those. But first, heat protectant. I'm gonna use this head candy one inch iron 
And I'm gonna focus on just curling kind of the middle of the hair strand and then keeping the ends curled but a little on the looser side. My next question is, are you guys gonna write your own vows? And currently that is the plan. We kind of decided that we wanted to write our vows together. Jetta says it's because she's afraid I'm going to write this entire like giant thing and she's gonna have written like half as much and then she'd feel bad, which does fit our personalities. But I thought it would be really sweet to like sit down and think about like what do we want to promise each other for this next lifetime of marriage and be able to kind of make some of the same vows to each other. And so yeah, we're writing them together. We're deciding together on what they're gonna be and I think that's really cool. All right, so they are taking that curl quite well. So I think I am going to switch to doing a little bit of a loop and pull like that for the rest of the strands now because I don't want these to end up being too tight. Now we're gonna clip in this big weft so that we can get it close to the bottom. Click her in, click, click it in over here. And actually this is really good sectioning for two of our side pieces as well. Bottom right. So we're gonna overlap it a little bit with the last piece and right there and same thing on the other side. Do you know what kind of wedding hairstyle you like? I actually have not figured it out yet. <laughs> I think I want it long and down. I've gotten that far. I think I definitely want there to be a braid somewhere. That is one thing that I did not have in my first wedding and I was always like kind of regretted not doing that because it's so me to have a braid. But it feels pretty symbolic that for this wedding I will have a braid. So yeah, that's probably gonna be part of it. I feel like I wanna go more on like the editorial side of things, like conceptual and cool. Not like making a hair sculpture or anything crazy. I just generally want it to be cool. Like almost a hairstyle that you would wear out somewhere or you would wear for a photo shoot maybe if we're going on the more formal ends. And you know, I'm open to inspiration if you guys wanna send any through. What is the hardest part about wedding planning? Um, let's see. I could definitely say guest list has been intense for sure. <laughs> just because we're having a little bit of a smaller wedding and I feel like when you're not doing micro and you're not doing big that like in between space it gets really really hard to figure out like who to invite and who not to invite because you know end of the day we'd invite everyone so that's been a little bit of something the whole 2022 of it all and the fact that everybody is getting married next year <sighs> that one has been a lot it's just like finding vendors and getting everything booked and like a lot of our top picks having already been booked before we get there that's definitely been a journey and then I think just like balancing life with wedding planning is definitely really difficult because there's so much to be done, so little time. You know, you still have to keep doing everything else that you were already doing, but just add on this extra few hours a week of work and it can be really intense. And the next layers of hair are going in. We've got a three piece in the back. Boop. Now I'm gonna put in my next side pieces as well. These are gonna go further back. And I really, really recommend curling your hair extensions as you put them in because you're already sectioning the hair, right? So that work is already being done. And then you can really curl each new layer in with your normal hair. So it makes everything blend really well as well. I forgot to tell you what my inspo was for this hair. That was a big glaring omission. I'm really thinking like Anya Taylor Joy, like soft waves, like barely waved, but I still want them to be kind of frequently. So that's why I was thinking a one inch with the kind of loop and pull method so that it's not a very deep ridge, but you get a slight ridge and like the frequency of them is determined by the one inch. So that's what I'm trying. We'll see how I feel in it. I might love it. I might not. We're going to see. So now I just have one more two piece left to put in the back. So I'm just going to part that part horizontally and I can really only put these up this high because they are seamless. So they're super skinny wefts and you're never really gonna see them, which is so helpful. <laughs> and I still have two one-piece clips to put in. And normally I put them back here to hide the hair, but I braided that back today. I think I'm actually gonna put them in here. But this just helps to like fill out the front really nicely and help to blend my longer layers in, I think, cause we have this like base here. Because I'm trying to do this really elongated kind of like editorial mermaid 
moment. I'm not gonna put the curls in close to the root. That is gonna probably feel weird for me, but let's see if I can like it. <laughs> this is a great thing to do at home when you're like trying to figure out what you do or don't wanna do for your wedding hair. Like obviously you might not be able to do it like a professional would, but you can try out different shapes and stuff on yourself and see what you like. And as I'm curling this top layer, I am picking up the hair directly underneath it so I can curl these two in together. I probably could have done this before I curled that last layer, but I did not think about it. So we're here now. All right, I think I'm ready to stand up now so you guys can see more of the hair situation. Let's change this angle. I think I want to call these waterfall waves, and I think I did it. It's kind of a mix of like old Hollywood and boho. I do think we could use a tiny bit of smoothing. So let's grab this product that I'm testing for a video next week. Haha, <laughs> you guys can come back and see that. I'm gonna put a little bit where my ends end. A little bit on these frizzy areas and then a little bit through the ends here. Oh my goodness, the shine. Okay, this is the hair and makeup for me to go try on some wedding dresses. I just think it helps so much to already have like a face on and your hair done so that you can really get the effect as much as possible. Obviously, it's not looking exactly like it's going to on the day, but you get a little bit, a little bit of a preview and it helps you with your choices so much. I'll give you guys a quick little bit of sneaky peek footage just so you have something to hold you over but again I'll be making that full video on like what I tried and liked and what I didn't after the wedding. I am feeling so glam and excited to go put on a bunch of beautiful dresses and see if anything just works out for me today. So anyway yeah wish me luck. I am definitely in it. I'm having a hard time deciding. Thoughts and prayers appreciated. <laughs> But that is it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, don't forget to hit the like button to help support my channel. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button and join the Bradaholic family here on Kaylee and Melissa. And all y'all can hit that bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. But that's it for today. Whether you're old or new or a casual lurker, thank you for spending time with me and I'll see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye. My skill is being able to blow the fallout off of my face. My brain is mush. Where to go, where to go? Listen, I'm so sorry, but there are no solo careers for hair strands. It is a team sport or no sport. Okay, now I can go rest my rock brain.